screen. So this is the name of the webinar. These are my contact details. I am Tuam Srekšnja, uh, responsible for RNet business development. So we just recently already went over uh, over the uh, agenda. So let's jump into it right away. So I uh, suppose that this is probably going to be a shorter webinar than uh, than our typical webinars, but it really depends on the amount of questions that uh, you ask. So anyway, jumping into uh, this uh, this this motivation for for this solution. So. Unfortunately, as of uh, recording this, uh, what is 14th of April, we have almost uh, 2, million, 2 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 worldwide. So this is really a large challenge for the, um, for the global uh, health systems. And um, a lot of them are not really prepared for a uh, for a pandemic, and this is why you see um, all across the world, um, all across the world, you know, uh, temporary hospitals being constructed, and medical people are quite heavily understaffed. And uh, this is where we thought, as soft technica, we could use maybe some of our expertise to help, to maybe potentially. Uh, help the situation. Um, in the case of uh, monitoring, you know, large number of patients. So in all of these hospitals, you. This is a relatively small image, but you know, you've seen these large ones, especially in China or all across the world, where you have large hospital beds, and not everybody, not. You know, you don't. They don't have enough medical staff to to monitor the uh, patient's vitals, uh, and to to like be mm, to, to follow and react uh, to those that 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 need this uh, necessity. So this is why this is why we actually have uh, created in a very rapid speed. So this is uh, within the last couple of weeks a uh, solution that uh, that essentially that essentially is a um, large scale patient temperature monitoring solution so i see that somebody here has a problem with audio but i suppose that uh, everybody else can hear me could uh, a couple of you maybe drop an okay in in the question part if you can hear me yeah most of most of the people can hear me so uh vlad i think you have to look into your part and and and, and, and some uh in some of the uh in some of your own settings somebody had a similar problem uh last time with the audio and i suppose that it was got that it got solved so uh, i'm just going to carry on here so um just giving you a little bit of credibility so why who are we and and why are we um you know why can we solve uh this particular issue so rnet is actually a brand name which and RNet is manufactured by Softechnica. So we are a company with 20, more than 20 years of uh, experience in uh, radio manufacturing. So uh, main business being point-to-point -point microwave radio links. Uh, we've sold our equipment across uh, 130 countries worldwide. We're a publicly traded company listed, listed on uh, NASDAQ. And we have three different uh, product groups, so microwave radio, test and measurement, and Internet of Things. And what concerns uh, this particular project is this uh, third category. So this is our um, Internet of Things part, meaning uh, the wireless uh, sensor network. So uh, let's start with a simple introduction of how the uh, system works. So essentially what you have here is a uh, base station, so uh, an RNet base station or uh, a gateway, an aggregator of the data 
that uh, receives information from different sensors, particularly in this case, we're talking about temperature sensors. So they're uh, using uh, the 868 megahertz uh, frequency in Europe, um, 920 megahertz in United States, Australia, uh, to communicate. So, and uh, this uh, frequency actually allows for quite a uh, large distance so you can have up to three kilometers line of sight range in the um, so line of sight range uh, from the sensor to the base station of course if there are uh, obstructions uh, you uh, it will be of course shorter because you cannot cheat physics so uh, in a hospital setting, uh, typically what we would we would expect is you know several hundreds of meters. Uh, so with this, uh, you can have up to a hundred sensors per base station. So one base station can receive uh, s receive the measurements from uh, three uh, from one hundred different sensors. Uh, the uh, there are, let's say, four different uh, time intervals where what you can configure. So you can get uh, the measurement once every minute, once every two minutes, once every five minutes, or uh, once every ten minutes. And effectively, uh, if you are uh, using this, uh, at least the longest transmission interval, uh, the 10 minute transmission interval, uh, it has quite exceptional uh, battery uh, battery life. So with a uh, lithium uh, battery, the sensor will last up to 10 years. So effectively quite long, I would say. So um, the main idea is that all of the data is gathered within the pro base station. So uh, the pro base station has a built-in memory. So as I already said, the data gets uh, written in the memory of the pro base station. It can support up to uh, 10 years of readings of data. So you can have, uh, you can connect directly to the base station uh, over ethernet or over uh, Wi-Fi. So you can connect directly to your PC, tablet, or phone. And it has kind of a small built-in server where you can essentially uh, see uh, all of the data without downloading any, you know, uh, you know, any other software. It's essentially not necessary because you would connect to the base station, you would put the IP address of the base station in your favorite browser, and you would see all of the uh, sensor readings. So, uh, of course, uh, when we're talking about larger uh, hospitals and larger large scale uh, implementations, then the uh, then the next step is of course having a cloud solution, which we also do have. So, um, effectively, the cloud is there to gather the data uh, for from multiple locations. And you can also access this data from anywhere in the world. So uh, having, you know, your uh, patient temperature readings uh, available to you wherever you are, you don't even have to be there on the location. So putting it essentially all together, this is how this um, architecture works. So you have the sensors that are uh, sending the data to the base station. So this is a unilateral communication, meaning the base station is only listening for the data and the sensor is only sending the data. And then you have the data exchange between the cloud and the base station. So the cloud uh, asks for the data to the base station and the base station sends the data over there. So uh, the main, uh, the main sensor that is connected to our transmitter is our uh, new, newest of the uh, RNet sensors, which is the uh, which is the RNet uh, medical temperature sensor. So 
what is um, you know important to mention for the sensor uh, you know it's it does satisfy this specific uh, medical ISO standard uh, meaning uh, particular requirements for basic safety and essential performance of clinical thermometers for uh, body temperature measurement uh, you can uh, it is lifetime factory calibrated so the temperature sensor does not need to be recalibrated uh, it has uh, medical grade precision meaning in this uh, in this temperature range where uh, where you would operate with this uh, with this system it has a uh, 0 0.1 degree accuracy so meaning you know normally uh, people uh, human body temperature is measured from uh, 30 to plus 40 degrees celsius uh, therefore within this range we have a 0 0.1 degree accuracy uh, so here you can see different uh, battery lives depending on how often do you need this um, this transmission interval to to occur right so and of course the uh, cable is made specifically you know uh, soft and and flexible so it can easily be um, it, it can easily be you know attached to to the uh, patient's arm or uh, wherever and then you put the transmitter most probably where the uh, infusion liquid is uh, located so it's essentially uh, relatively uh, yeah relatively easy to use so uh, there is a question that uh, you know someone is interested in the presentation and of course we will uh, send you the presentation afterwards no problem so um, carrying on so how does the solution uh, look and what is the main benefits so effectively the way that it would be set up is uh, as I already explained but here you would you know see a schematic of it, of it. so you would have a centralized uh, hub or the centralized base station which is the RNN base station uh, that would be connected to up to you know 100 different uh, 100 different uh, these human body temperature sensors and it would collect the data once every minute or uh, once every 10 minutes uh, or what whatever predefined uh, interval interval uh, that is uh, set so uh, you can have all of the data on the cloud or locally um, it is flexible enough that you can have it uh, you know on the PC or on a tablet or even on your smartphone so it's easy uh, for doctors who are you know uh, treating their patients uh, they can walk into the room where the patient is uh, you know staying he can look up the history of the you know past uh, couple of days of how the temperature of the patient has changed and it is very easy and you know uh, relatively uh, straightforward to work with it essentially uh, the system itself has been designed uh, for very simple and quick setup so uh, from one point of view it really saves time so there's no you know extensive planning or extensive um, you know extensive setup necessary and because these are wireless sensors uh, you don't really need to worry about infrastructure too much you just you know put a put a base station in the centralized uh, place you know where all of the nurses are and you can have all of these sensors with the patients and uh, it's a relatively easy setup uh, going f further 
Uh, what I've already mentioned is this uh, exceptionally long range radio. So this is something where we are uh, industry leaders in this uh, this this um, distance, at least from the sensor to the uh, base station. So this means that you can cover even a large hospital with a single base station, well, at least a uh, hospital floor or uh, so to say. So, so, so essentially uh, this makes it quite a cost effective solution as well. Um, anyway, going further, so uh, of course 24 seven monitoring. So on the first uh, hospital tests where we are performing this, uh, already the, um, the doctors have uh, said that it makes uh, the uh, job of the nurse a little bit easier because uh, she has to fill out forms, you know, four times a day about the uh, patient temperature. And then in this case, she doesn't have to wake up uh, the patient at 6 a.m. because, you know, the form says that, you know, uh, there uh, that you have to like have that temperature at 6 a.m. So you can just retrospect retrospectively uh, have this data about, uh, you know, what was the patient's temperature at each um, and every time um, during the day. Uh, there's no uh, field calibration necessary. So the sensors are factory calibrated for their lifespan, uh, which, uh, which I also already touched on a little bit. And uh, there's a nice uh, extra feature of having uh, customizable alarms. So you can set alarm thresholds uh, for specific temperatures. So, you know, whenever the alarm threshold is breached, either the patient becomes too hot or too cold, you get an alarm. Uh, it is also possible to add a, a, um, a, a, mo a mobile uh, router to the, um, to the pro base station, and then you can even send SMS uh to the responsible nurses so if something happens you know during the night the temperature is climbing you can get an alarm uh quite rapidly um so another good thing about the rnet base station is that you have this uh, data redundancy so as i explained we have uh, both the base station and the cloud so if anything happens to one of the data sources you have a safe backup so that is also you know a really nice um, nice thing to have uh, you know just just in case and uh, of course the data agglomeration so we have a centralized data collection possibility through the rnet uh, rnet cloud so right so um you know, taking all of this, all of this into account, uh, the main idea here is to, of course, alleviate uh, some of the stress off of the uh, medical medical staff. So, you know, if if, if uh, you can help by automa automatizing some of the pro some part of the process, mm, that uh, alleviates some of some of the strain as well as the fact that of course you know uh, if we're talking about covid specifically then any, anything that you can do remotely which is this case is temperature monitoring uh anything that you can do remotely uh, actually lowers this um this contact uh of the uh, medical professional and the covid patient so it actually does decrease the risk of the medical uh, medical uh, it actually does decrease the risk of uh, of the medical staff getting exposure to the um, 
to to the COVID patients themselves, and therefore there might be a smaller risk that they become sick themselves. So I see also um, Arvin is writing that it would be nice if we can add heart rate and O2. Um, this is something that we've also heard, and uh, this is why we are uh, currently investigating uh, SpO2 sensor, so that is the periphery peripheral capillary oxygen saturation. So this is essentially an estimate of the O2. But uh, of course, this is again a new direction that uh, Soft Technica and, and, and with that RNET is taking. So uh, we can't really give a solid answer of an a availability of this type of sensor because it of course has to be medical grade and we have to check everything and we have to find out which one is you know the best and we have to uh get you know as 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 much you know input uh input as as um as as necessary as, as possible from basically you people that are actually working working in the field and either are uh, you know working in, in hospitals yourself or uh, working together with people that are working in, in hospitals. But anyway, uh, as I already said, uh, this, uh, this will be and it was a relatively uh, short webinar where uh, within these 25 minutes I kind of introduced you mainly to to the solution and what i can say is that you know the rnet uh, team is really laser focused right now on the solution and on development uh, so any type of feedback any type of you know comments are are very welcome at this stage so uh, this brings me essentially to the last slide of the presentation uh, which is uh, anything regarding your questions um, and suggestions. So this let's 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 start the Q and A part. So uh, one one of the one of the questions from Vladimir is here that uh, where 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 does the sensor go on the human body? So uh, essentially uh, where we're testing it so far. Um, in, in, in the local hospital here in Riga, they are attaching it to the patient's arm. So uh, it's basically attached to the form, forearm. It's being taped there. It is also uh, for, for patients in, um, uh, how do you call that, critical care or, or uh, for, for patients that are intensive care, uh, it is also possible to use this uh, thermometer rectally uh, but effectively uh, this is also something that we are uh, looking for as um, as feedback from medical professionals where it would potentially be the most uh, comfortable and where it would make the most sense to actually take that temperature but currently yeah those are the two options are there any other questions so uh, the question is regarding the uh, standard cable length. Uh, we have uh, not, let's say, uh, agreed upon a final uh, standard cable uh, length. Uh, it is really easy to actually change this this standard uh, whilst whilst this whole. Uh, project is relatively young. Yes, we are looking uh, more towards uh, two meters, maybe two and a half. Uh, again, this really does depend on the feedback from the market. So because the first, uh, first um, samples that we provided to the hospital, uh, they were 1.5 meters long. And then their idea was to actually put the uh, sensor transmitter where uh, normally you would put the infusion liquid, so the uh, the system, and uh, for, from there to the forearm, 
1.2 meters uh, was determined to be too short. So uh, what we heard as a, a good feedback to be like uh, two meters or even two and a half meters. So now we're looking into that direction. Of course, there is the other option where if you would attach that sensor to your arm and you would have it in a shorter cable, you might be it might be easier for somebody to carry it around. So that could also be an option. So there is a very nice, um, very good question uh, from Cristiano. So do you have, uh, do you know if there are problems with other medical appliances or pacemaker or similar in terms of RF interference? So uh, effectively no, uh, because uh, this is um, based on uh, LP1 technology, so that's low power wide area no network. So the actual powers uh, of, of transmission are very, very low. And the sensitivity of the base station is very high. So it actually, you know, let's say hears uh, a lot, a lot of, you know, not too powerful signals that are being transmitted from the sensor as well as uh, how uh, typically in most, you know, European, United States, and, and you know, in most countries, at least worldwide, uh, where this um, frequency band, this 920 or 868 megahertz is regulated, um, you cannot uh, have like uninterrupted uh, transmissions in this band uh, meaning that this band is really reserved for these types of signals that are very uh, sh short-lived and uh, only occasional. So the way that the uh, sensor works is actually, uh, if you have, for example, uh, configured it for a uh, 10-minute sending interval, transmission interval, then the sensor is actually sleeping for those 10 minutes. Then it wakes up, it does the measurement, uh, it sends the data uh, and it goes back to sleep. And uh, the actual sending of the data is only a couple of milliseconds long. So the probability of interference or the probability of a signal collision is virtually non-existent. So uh, no, there will be no radio frequency issues in uh, in 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 um, hospitals. Um, so I have a temperature sensor with a cable similar to the one you did show. Is is this similar to the one we saw here? So Louis. Um, ask this question and I'm not uh, completely sure that I understood uh, this this uh, this this answer so let's let me explain it at least uh, how I understood your question and then maybe you can correct me uh, so what you're saying is that you already have a RNET temperature sensor probably a probe sensor and whether or not this is similar uh, the question is no. Uh, this is not really similar because one, this is more precise than any other uh, sensor that uh, that we have manufactured so far. And two, uh, this is the only RNET medical grade sensor, meaning that you know this 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 is the only one that we can uh, safely say that you know this is safe to use. Uh, to take temperature from humans, you know, that the probe is uh, safe for human contact, you know, both on skin or rectally and all of that. So, um, yes, it is similar to all of our other kind of sensors with probes, but this one is, this is the only one that you can use on humans. So, form factor is similar, yeah. I would say form factor is very similar. Okay, so you received uh, from us a sensor uh, for soil temperature. 
uh, yeah, don't use that one in, in, in humans. So if you have a sensor for soil temperature, that is meant for soil, not for humans. Uh, question from Vladimir, will the sensor be provided with the belts to be attached to the body? Um, at the current stage, it is not um, provided with this belt or whatever you call it, because we want to have uh, first, let's say these um, feedback from, from hospitals because they already have standardized ways of attaching, you know, temperature sensors or whatever other sensors to the human body. Uh, and after this feedback, we will decide internally uh, whether or not we provide it together with, with an attaching mechanism. Perhaps in, 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 in the near future, this will change. Of course, with this project, um, everything changes, you know, by the day or I would say even by the hour. So we also, the sales department here in, in, in RNet and the marketing department will work very hard to actually uh, keep you uh, up to date to all of the new developments here. So sorry if we have like a bit, uh, a lot of messages uh, in, in the near future regarding this, but everybody's working very actively and we'll try to keep you informed. Uh, so, do, does the cable sanitar procedure uh, is have special requirements? I'm not sure if um, if, if 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 I understand the um, this uh, question from Oleg. Um, so uh, regarding sanitar requirements, uh, you would use you know. Um, typical disinfection methods as you would do with any other electronics that's used in the hospital. We are currently doing tests of, uh, of which, which, which ones of the methods um, are most appropriate for the sensor, but we see that, that, that you know, because it's IP uh, 68. It is a very high protection class. That means that uh, it withstands uh, these these uh, sanitation, you know, these um, the des disinfections with 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 um, alcohol type uh, disinfectants and and things like that. Um, can we use a remote console unit to read the temperature from the sensor LCD? Um, well, effectively, it, 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 it really depends on the unit and whether or not you want to work with uh, integrating the data. The short answer is yes. Uh, the bit longer answer is I would suppose that, you know, you would want to have this on a screen where you would get all the info from and then you know we can of course think about uh, next steps into integrating it into larger systems but um, I'm not I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure like uh, what is what is that LCD that you are specifically referring to uh let me look that up okay so the question was more regarding whether or not you, we have an L lcd cons console to be used with all the sensors so we don't uh we don't really sell a, a specific lcd cons console that can be used with all the sensors uh you can use any uh, computer any you know um uh, any, um, how do you call that, tablet, so, so any cheap tablet will, will do mostly. You can use your uh, phone for the same thing. We will have a specific app for this, uh, but we don't plan on selling a specific screen only for this. Uh, 
because that will just you know increase the amount of devices which are you know already quite quite a much quite much and i don't think that's really that necessary uh let's see do we have other questions oh so you i think your specific question uh is uh, more geared towards rnet mini if you call that the lcd console and no rnet mini will not support uh the sensor because the sensor has a higher precision class however the rnet mini is um let's say the oldest of the base station uh, and uh, we do not plan on uh, revising its uh, firmware because effectively it has uh, already let's say uh, it's 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 been filled to the max of 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 its potential functionality and potential sensor support so no so so basically it's only the um rnet pro base station that can be used with uh with this uh, sensor okay i like that there are a lot of questions coming in and most of them are uh, at least i feel like i can answer most of them uh if you have any other questions um, after the after this uh, webinar please feel free to contact me directly uh, you have all of the my contact details here yeah if you have you know any feedback to uh, any of your potential customers or potential use cases where you've showed a presentation or a video about this and there's some you know feedback please forward it to me you know every uh every bit of information right now is uh super important uh because you know we need this feedback to to decide uh what are the most essential steps to take next because this is being uh, developed at very high speeds. And of course, uh, if you do something uh, very rapidly, you can't really do everything in you know, every single nuance of the thing. So we have to have a, a very nice and clear list of uh, priorities. So, and this, you know, our R&D priorities will be uh set based on the market feedback so this is a very important point so yeah um i guess i will wait a couple of more minutes to see if any uh live questions come in but if not we will end the webinar with this okay i uh see a lot of uh thanks here in the uh in these uh question sections so no problem you're welcome and all of that um i don't see any other questions coming in so i will uh consider uh, for the time being uh closed this topic uh we will upload this uh, in the coming days uh, to our youtube channel we will send you all an email regarding where you can find this uh, recording um yeah otherwise you know uh, stay safe in this strange times and 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 hopefully uh this will be a uh, you know small but helpful um small and helpful tool that 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 can uh, you know help help the whole world uh, to fight this 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 pandemic and and, and this uh, these problems that we're facing right now so um other than that have 
have like a uh, nice uh, rest of the week. Bye-bye.